Now on to the dinosaur of the day, Therizinosaurus, which was requested from Bob via Facebook, so thanks Bob. The name Therizinosaurus means scythe lizard and comes from the Greek word therizo that means to reap or to cut off. It was a theropod that lived in the late Cretaceous. There's only one species, Therizinosaurus shalaniformis. Fossils have been found in Mongolia and it was at first thought to be turtle-like. The species name means turtle formed, but only a few bones have been found including large hand claws. The find was from a joint Soviet-Mongolian fossil expedition in 1948 in Mongolia. Russian paleontologist Evgeny Malev named it in 1954 and he thought it was a turtle-like reptile that used its claws to get to seaweed, since the holotype only has claws. He thought Therizinosaurus used its forelimbs for swimming and then the claws would be to cut aquatic vegetation, like seaweed. Then more fossils were found, including more claws and parts of forelimbs, which Rinchen Barsbold described in 1976. And then in 1982, Altengero Pearl described another specimen which had hind limbs. In 1970, Anatoly Konstantinovich Rostovinsky said Therizinosaurus was a dinosaur and not actually a turtle. It was controversial, though, about what kind of dinosaur Therizinosaurus was. Some thought it was a carnosaur, others thought that its killing claw was really similar to a Deinonychosaur. Eventually, it was classified as some type of theropod. And in northern China, there were some related species found that helped paleontologists figure out more about Therizinosaurus. And Therizinosaurus was at first identified as a Segnosaurid when Segnosaurus and Erlikosaurus were found, and they were found in Asia. Segnosaurids are herbivorous theropods with long arms, long necks, and big, wide bellies. The Segnosaur group name eventually changed to Therizinosaur, and I'll get to a little bit more on that later. In fossils found in the 80s and 90s, there was Alxosaurus and Bapiosaurus, and they were determined to be in the same group as Therizinosaurus, which gave paleontologists the idea that Therizinosaurus probably had a bird-like pelvis, and they got more details about the feet and skulls. And eventually they concluded that Therizinosaurus and other dinosaurs in its group were more advanced herbivorous manoraptoran theropods. So again, Therizinosaurids are theropods, but they're herbivores, unlike most other theropods, which are carnivores. They're also kind of unusual theropods, because theropods usually only use three toes when they're standing and walking, but Therizinosaurs use four toes. Based on related Therizinosaurids, scientists have kind of pieced together what Therizinosaurus looks like. So it probably had a small skull, a long neck, and a wide body. It was probably bipedal. It probably had long forelimbs, estimated 8 feet or 2.5 meters, or even up to 11 and a half feet or 3.5 meters long. Gregory S. Paul in 2010 estimated that the largest Therizinosaurus would have been 33 feet or 10 meters long and weighed 5 tons. This is based on the largest known Therizinosaurus and Manoraptorans. Therizinosaurus is closely related to Velociraptor based on the shape of its wrist and hip bones, but it also looks a lot like the Ornithomimid Dinochirus. This is because of its claws. Therizinosaurus had large claws, larger than most Therizinosaurs. They're probably about 3.3 feet or 1 meter long, and they have actually the longest claws of any known animal. These claws were straight, but tapered into a point gradually and the claws may have been used for display to show reproductive maturity, or males may have fought each other with their claws, like how ceratopsians battle with their horns. Claws may have also been a deterrent for predator Tarbosaurus batar, which was one of the predators that lived around it, and this would have helped Therizinosaurus look fearsome. Just a quick note, other dinosaurs that lived around Therizinosaurus included Avamimus and Allioramus, which was a tyrannosaur. But Therizinosaurus possibly also used its large claws to pull down tree branches. So if it pulled down vegetation, then it may have been a picky eater, kind of figuring out what it wanted from the tall trees. It was probably an herbivore. This is based on other Therizinosaurus, although it's unclear what exactly it ate. That's because no skull has been found. But most of its relatives had small leaf-shaped teeth and were herbivores. Some scientists think Therizinosaurus ate insects and may have used their claws to rip into termite nests, but some Therizinosaurs may have been omnivores. Some Therizinosaurs had feathers, such as Bapiosaurus from China, but it's unclear if Therizinosaurus had feathers because it was much larger than Bapiosaurus. 
In 2013, a nest of therizinosaur eggs were found, 17 clutches in the Gobi Desert, which showed that maybe therizinosaurs were somewhat social. The eggs that were found had no embryos, which may mean they all hatched and then the babies left with their parents. The adults of the eggs were estimated to weigh 1,100 pounds or 500 kilograms. You can see a life-sized Therizinosaurus statue in Poland, along with Allosaurus, Diplodocus, and Iguanodon, and more, in Jura Park. You can also see Therizinosaurus and Tarbosaurus battling in Chased by Dinosaurs, a documentary from 2002. And you can see Therizinosaurus in BBC's Walking with Dinosaurs Inside Their World. Therizinosaurus will be in a future update of Ark Survival Evolved, which is a game we've talked about on this show. It will be large and slow, but if you tame it, players will be able to ride it and use Therizinosaurus for defense. Therizinosaurus also first inspired how Indominus Rex from Jurassic World looked. This is according to Jack Horner in an interview with Yahoo Movies, and this is due to its big, grasping arms. So, Therizinosaurus is part of the family Therizinosauridae, which means reaper lizards, and they're advanced theropods. They're herbivores and omnivores. They lived in the Cretaceous, and they've been found in Mongolia, China, and the U.S. Therizinosaurs had long necks, wide torsos, and they walked on four toes in a similar way to basal sauropodomorphs. They had unique hip bones that pointed backwards, and that made paleontologists originally think that they were like the bird-hipped ornithischians. They also have large claws on their hands. They could reach really far forward with their forelimbs, farther than other theropods, which made scientists think that they were mostly herbivores. They may have used their claws to grasp at branches, similar to a sloth. Yeah, I really like the comparison to a sloth. If you've ever been in a museum and seen a giant sloth, they're enormous and they have huge claws, actually, that they use for grabbing branches and things. So even though they have like these menacing claws and big hands, you know, they didn't attack anything. I don't, or maybe they used it for defense. I don't know, but they were definitely herbivores. So I think that's a good comparison. Yeah. And as I mentioned, Bapiosaurus is known to have had feathers because the skin impressions found with it show primitive down-like feathers, which is similar to the Compsognathid Cynosauroteryx. Some Therizinosaurs were relatively small, like Bapiosaurus, which was 7.3 feet or 2.2 meters long, but others were large, and Therizinosaurus was the largest. Because Therizinosaurus was such an incomplete find, and it had a whole bunch of strange features, it had things in common with theropods, prosauropods, and ornithischians, scientists at first grouped Therizinosaurs as Cygnosaurs. They also thought that they were semi-quadrupedal, that is, cygnosaurs, because prosauropods were semi-quadrupedal. But this is actually impossible because they have such bird-like wrists. In the mid-1990s, scientists found Alxosaurus, which was more like a typical theropod. And Alxosaurus and Therizinosaurus were part of the cygnosaur group, which made more scientists accept that these dinosaurs were herbivorous theropods, descended from carnivorous theropods. Then more primitive dinosaurs in the same group were found, including Bapiosaurus in 1999 and Falcarius in 2005, which was described as a missing link between carnivorous manoraptoran theropods and herbivorous therizinosaurs. And interestingly, therizinosaurs had skulls similar to sauropods and teeth and jaws that made them herbivores. The group Segnosauria was named originally as an infraorder of theropoda in 1980. But now they're considered a specialized group within Theropoda and a synonym of Therizinosauridae. This is because Therizinosaur was named first, so the group took the new name once scientists realized that Therizinosaurus was part of the same group as Cygnosaurs. So what happened was, in 1954, Malev named the superfamily Therizinosauroidea, but it only had Therizinosaurus in it at the time. And then scientists found that it was an advanced Cygnosaur and renamed the group partly because Therizinosauroidea was older, and partly because Cygnosauria was associated with the idea that they were related to prosauropods, which has been discredited. There's not much known about Therizinosaur behavior, but CT scans in 2012 of the Therizinosaur Ehrlichosaurus showed that it had a large brain, good balance, and a good sense of hearing and smell, which could have helped avoid predators or help them find food or even engage in social behavior. 